from a series win at home to a lot of runs being scored. I'll tell you a little bit about my meeting with Yanner Diaz after the game at Uberito. We'll talk about this and what we have set for us this week for 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 the Astros as they resecured first place in the AL West. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Beer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You find me on Twitter, Derek Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team, every day. Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at HM Wellhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive. I love a home series win. Always Stros. I guess the home cooking was a little bit better this weekend because um, run and off runs and offense have been very uh, few at home. And so it's good to see that happen. And guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. We are about 14 subscriptions away from 9,000 guys. So go out there, subscribe to us on YouTube and go and give us a like while you're at it and um, go and make us your everyday listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you check out your podcast, go and check out the Locked on Astros podcast and become an everyday or somebody that listens to our podcast every day. And if you want to get out to the Minute Maid Park every day, why don't you check out Game Time? Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And if you're looking at everything that happened in this game and this whole series, I know that Blake Snell kind of limited the Astros' offense, but overall, this series. Um, I, I know we talked about it a little bit at Hooters and Baytown on Saturday, but that was more of Snell being just a great pitcher. And I think what we saw on Saturday was the Astros offense, uh, offense kind of um, persevering. And uh, we saw that again today. And we saw Kyle Tucker with uh, three trip, uh, sorry, two triples. We saw him with two stolen bases in the same inning. It was just like he was abusing the knuckleball pitcher. And uh, then I, I think the only way that the pitcher could actually get Alvarez out was to throw him knuckleballs. So he was throwing him during one at bat, all knuckleballs. And it was, uh, I think he snuck in one fastball, but this was one of those interesting games where the Astros scored a lot of runs at home and it, it was good to see. We needed. Yeah, to see definitely. It. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it was it was one of those series where, like, you know, if if the Astros, even though the Mariners were also losing, the Astros would not have put any distance between themselves and and the Mariners. At this point, I'm really, I'm honestly, the Rangers are of zero concern to me. Like, literally, not even on my radar. Um, but today, look, the Astros put up a three spot in the in the third inning and then after that I mean the sixth inning was when they put that big out um, eight run outburst JP France had a had a little bit of control issues today and we're we're very fortunate that the San Diego Padres hitters did not take advantage of that I mean Jerks at Profar is like an Astro killer that guy had an amazing series against us he was 3 for 4 today but outside of him and Matt Carpenter's home run. You know what's funny, Eric? Matt Carpenter, I've seen him hit a home run as a Round Rock Express. I've seen him hit a home run as a Cardinal, as a Yankee, and now as a Padre. I wasn't there in person, but I'm like, this guy, everywhere he goes, this guy's got quite a career. He is, he is, he's a guy that has persevered. But speaking of perseverance, JP France, even though he was getting outside of himself, he couldn't really hit the zone the first inning. First inning, he had like 30-something pitches. The next inning, he did like nine. It was really efficient. He has really shown the ability to lock in, to settle down, and not just make adjustments to the season, but he right. made adjustments in the game today. And that is huge because after your first and second starter, your three, four, and five guys have been very inconsistent. And so you need the starters to come back to earth. You need the starters to be where they have been when they're at their best. So – you love seeing that. 
And I, I mean, just this, this offense today, this offense yesterday, Eric, this team's fun to watch. And when the right lineup is in there, even when you don't like yesterday, they won and they didn't have, you know, they didn't have McCormick. They didn't have Diaz, but they still kicked butt. Maldonado being in there is not necessarily a horrible thing. If the rest of the team is firing on all cylinders, right? So I like what I saw this weekend. I love what I saw out of JP France today. I, I thought it was encouraging because he has struggled more lately than early on. Yeah. And so you saw um, him with five walks on the game, but he was able to limit the, um, uh, I almost said the Cardinals because I was listening on the radio earlier. And when Carpenter hit the home run, I think it was Sparky. He said the Cardinals uh, are on the board too, because we all think of Matt Carpenter as a Cardinal. Right. Uh, but uh, we played the Padres today, and but JP France limited them to only one run. It was uh, that Matt Carpenter home run, uh, four hits. He did allow the, the five walks, five strikeouts. Overall, it was his 11th win on the season. So there's not too much you can say besides, yeah, if you want to, if you want to start in postseason, you're going to have to do better than five walks. That goes to any of these guys going for yeah. rotation, right? And- but but if you if you limit the runs, I don't mind the walks if you keep right. the runs off the board. Um, but but like you're saying, the, yeah, post you're right. Post you're right. Postseason is different. Post walks are killers are, in postseason. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And and, and I I really think J P France is going to get it get it figured out because he was dealing in in the beginning. But you want your guys though right now getting into trouble. You want them getting out of trouble. Yeah, and that's what I think JP France has been successful at doing more times than not. Yeah, I know, and yes, I I believe that Matt Carpenter played with the Yankees too, and I know he's played with other teams, but we all think of Matt Carpenter as the longtime Cardinals player. Uh, I, that's just what I think of him as. But uh, well, that's so, what he was before he fell off, and then I mean, because yeah. he became an obscurity, almost he almost left baseball, and then he ended up signing that minor league deal. And that's when he got picked up by the Yankees because I believe the Rangers had waived him and then the right. Yankees picked him up and then reinvigorated his, his, uh, his career. Yes. So Altuve, Pena, Alvarez, Bregman, Tucker, Abreu, Brantley, McCormick, Diaz, Brantley batting seventh in this lineup. You gotta love it. I mean, this is probably and, the best lineup that Dusty Baker's thrown out there all season, right? So yeah. So you have Brantley with a 972 OPS, McCormick with an 888 OPS, and Diaz with an 842 OPS. This is a murder lineup. This is Altuve, Pena, and Alvarez up top. Bregman, Tucker, Dubon, and then Abreu, Brantley, McCormick, Diaz. I mean, these guys. I'm sorry, Bregman, Tucker, Abreu, Um, like Tucker today, dude, Tucker really wants 30-30. Tucker is going for that. When he stole third, he stole second on a knuckleball, which was a perfect pitch to to go on. When he saw that ball tailing off with with no rotation, he took off. And the catcher, Capuano, that guy, he was having a hard time holding on to the baseball. Not just knuckleballs he was having a hard time holding on to four seams he was having a hard time holding on to balls thrown to him from third base he had somewhat of a rough game um today so the Padres catcher was not liking it behind the plate but dude did you see Chaz's uniform from head to toe was full of dirt when he was at bat at one point I was like that reminds me of Craig Biggio and he just scraps I mean Hey, get that kid some more banana pudding. Someone's like, Ma, where's the meatloaf? And I'm like, more like, Ma, where's the banana pudding? Because he tracked down a fly ball in center field. He 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 got two two more hits, and yeah, he just hustled. Bases. Yeah, he had two stolen bases. Him and Kyle Tucker both stole two bases. Right. I mean, what a great effort out of this entire team. Top to line, top to bottom, this lineup is killer, and this is what I expect to see in the playoffs. Yes. Uh, So I know that there's a lot of concern about the Astros record in uh, extra inning games. I believe they're 0-11 on the season and uh, in one run games, uh, they've got a pretty bad record as well. And uh, I know the home record is I think they're two games over 500 now. I believe they're 37 and 35 now. Since, uh, they were 35 and 35 after Friday's game. 
But um, and I believe I, I haven't done the math yet, but I believe that we are now at a plus run differential at home. So uh, with the last two, the offense of the last two games, but if That's not, true. we're pretty close to it. I haven't done the math yet to, to see that, but the Astros, if they continue to do this in the next series versus the A's, it's going to be a very welcome sight. Uh, but we've seen this uh, for stints. We, we need this for a long term. This does not need to be a short term relationship, a casual relationship at home. You need to have a offensive breakout uh, every, every series. I mean, you can't keep on not getting shut out at home or like right. struggling. And this is the team, maybe not 12 runs like we had uh, today, maybe six runs like we had the other day, but you've got to go out there. <laughs> Why not? I want to get greedy. So in one run games, Eric, 17 and 18, they're exactly one game under 500 in two run games are 18 and 15. And so, yeah, when it's close, Mm, it's not, it's a little bit better in two run games, but one run games, they're not great. Now, when they score first, they're 58 and 20. So if the Astros put, put, put a number up on the board first, they, they, so I'm sorry, I'm looking at the media notes. One of the, one of the um, statistical things is out hit the opponent. When they out hit the opponent, they're 60 and 15. That's interesting how that works. So, Hey, well, look, normally that happens. Yeah, exactly. I know that's why I said that's an interesting stat. So game time is a place that you want to get last minute ticket deals. You don't have to plan months in advance. You can go right to your phone. Look, if you download the app today, I promise you, you won't be sorry because they have great flash deals on all kinds of tickets, not just baseball. Football is here. Basketball is around the corner. Concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So the game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section, and row for less game time will credit you 110% the different get images of your seats before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps in your set tickets are sent directly to your phone. So you never have to dig through your email. Look, I have used game time personally. I have done it literally walking up to minute Maid park and I've gotten killer deals. So download the game time app today, create an account and use the code locked on MLB. For twenty dollars off your first purchase, that's locked on MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Lowest price guaranteed. And the Astros play the A's on Monday at seven ten p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. All right. So if you're looking at what the Astros did, they won twelve to two. They are now eighty two and sixty two on the season, and their lead in the AL West is now two point five games because the A's took care of business versus the Mariners uh, this week. No, no, the Rays. The Rays took care of business against the Mariners this weekend, and uh, so there's times where like, come on, Rays, do what you want to do and win some ball games because it, it seemed like they're trailing, but they always found a way to come back. And then uh, I know George Kirby uh, struggled a little bit there and had some words with Scott Service, but nine of its next 12 games are against the A's and the Royals. So this is a chance for the Astros to make up some ground. And when I say make up some ground, I mean put some ground in between them and the Mariners and the Rangers. The Rangers did win today, and we can't overlook what the Blue Jays are doing because the Blue Jays are going to be nipping at our tails. I know they can't really be doing anything about the AL West competition, but they're going to be kind of nipping at the tails of whoever's in the wild card. So you got to watch out for them. Um, and according to um, Elias, according to Brian McTaggart, not only is Kyle Tucker the first Astros player in history to triple twice in one inning, but it's only the 11th time it's happened in MLB history. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, basically, it's I, I think McTaggart noted that it's like three times more rare than a perfect game. Um, I want to put that question back up there from Dorothy. She's asking how many games before clinching the playoff spot. Um, when we were 80 and 62, the the number was 18 for the playoffs. I believe it's down to 17 because are we at 82 wins right now? What are we, What is our record now? Yeah, 82. So it is now um, it is now 16 games for the playoffs and it should be 19 games to win the division. Um, so those are our magic numbers, 19 to clinch the division and 16 to make it back to or to like clinch a playoff spot. So we're getting close. We have right. a much easier road. Seattle is they've they've got a gauntlet that they've got to go through. 
they actually go to Anaheim for three. Actually, yeah, they go to Anaheim for three, and then they're at home against the Dodgers. We've got, like you mentioned, the A's and the Royals. That's not bad. Um, right. I'll take six games against the Royals. Oh, hey, uh, a quick Zach Grinke note. I don't know if you um, caught the video that I reposted. Of His Zach son, Grinke's Matt Flipping, yeah. Yeah, like switch, you know, he's like switch hitting, and he, the dude's got power from the left side. I'm like, we need to get our scouts on little Grinky. I don't know which one of his sons. I don't know how old he is, but they need to go ahead and get the rights to that kid because that kid's got a powerful left-handed bat. Yeah, he but it's like right 20 side. feet or something to the dugout. Eric, Eric, I'm not being okay. – come on, dude. All oh, hell, Eric. baby Zach. Yes, thank you. I'm trying to pump up baby Grinky, and you're like tearing the kid down because he's only like eight or whatever. But, <laughs> no, I just I just thought that was cool. Real quick. Yeah, I want to say thank you to Uberito for um, having locked on Astros out. Um, I got to go out there, got to meet Yanner Diaz. I got to meet a lot of our fans, Eric. And I met so many people who watch our show every night. If I met you tonight and we we got to take a picture together, I'll be posting that stuff. I'll be posting videos from the event. I'll create an episode like I did for the Alex Bregman. Thank you all for saying hi. It really means a lot. Y'all support. It was really cool. It was a great crowd, Eric. The people were awesome. And um, Uberito loved having us out there. So thank you all for inviting us. And we look forward to doing some more things, hopefully down the road with Mr. Diaz as well. One of the nicest major league players I've ever met. I'm telling you, the kid's a future star. I don't know if y'all know this. His youngest brother's in the Cubs system. He's a catcher, 19. His middle brother is also in the Astros system at the Florida Complex, Complex League. His agent said basically they're like the Molinas of the Dominican Republic. I mean, they are a catching family. All three of those kids okay. are going to be all-stars one day. Yeah, three catchers they're all catchers well, we've got two of them in our system all right well jay asked a very serious question when's the last time bregman's had a day off kind of goes against dusty's mo well jay um alex bregman is a big boy and big boys don't take days off uh so that's why and plus you don't really have anybody to play third base uh so big boy you ain't taking day off yeah there's yeah there's a little bit wider margin of playability at third base in the hot corner than at second base or shortstop, left field, right field, center field, things like that. Right. So yeah, that that is that is a little nuanced topic when it when it comes to Bregman because of the limit there. Um, but yeah, I mean, hey, that is that is a great question. But I can tell you this that I know with confidence that no matter what was being talked about this weekend, no matter what Dusty said, no matter what what was said that was the frustrations, all this stuff, these players have dusty's back dusty has these players back nobody's splintered in the clubhouse nobody hates each other so if you hear people saying that they simply don't know period end of story i'll just tell you that right now so make sure we focus on the stuff that's good about this team and that's great about this team these players want to do one thing and one thing only they want to win a second title they want to go back to back all right i do see that uh he was off on june 7th um, so that's the last time I can see that he was off. Uh, and didn't but, didn't Jolks didn't Jolks start at third or who who started at third? That I want to say though? it was Dubon or somebody else. I can't pull up that game because he didn't start yeah. that day. But I'm trying to look for the gaps in the days. Uh, but okay, yeah, I'll, I know I'll there's only two games talking. he's actually missed the entire season. He's been pretty much in the lineup all year because uh, he's actually. I'm got a lot, a lot of RBIs, and he's having a great season for him. Uh, for, oh, he's barreling the ball. Yeah, he's like in top ten, I believe, in RBIs. He's got 93 on the season. His OPS is all the way up to 817. His batting average is up to 272. Kyle Tucker finally eclipsed his hundred RBIs on Saturday. He got two more RBIs today, so he's at 103 now. So uh, this is something that he's um, he's doing for the first time too. So he's got a 290 batting average, 888 uh, OPS percent uh, OPS. So he's looking good. Alvarez is looking more like he's supposed to batting 301 with the 1003 OPS. So and Pena getting back up there. I know he's kind of slumping a little bit, but he's still up there at 261 and 709 OPS. But Altuve, how about this guy with another home run, 16 home runs? He's missed almost half the season and he's still hitting with the 16 home runs. This dude is just a um, terminator out there. He's just a uh, Android, I don't know what you would call him. He just he just goes out there and just does stuff that 
somebody his size is not supposed to do. And he's he he, he, he should did. be a Hall of Famer. I don't care what happened in 2017. They better put him in Hall of Fame someday. Well, he's not going to not be in the Hall of Fame. OK, that's that's not going to happen. The only thing that could happen that that might be somewhat an eyesore to us as as Houstonians or the you know Houston Astros nation is if he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, because what he's done is done nothing short of being a first ballot Hall of Famer. And that's what he should be. But Jose Altuve in 39 games, okay, since coming from the IL, he is hitting 350, 39 runs, eight stolen bases, a 419 on base percentage, 1,012 OPS. In that span, he's first with those 39 runs. He's second in the league in hits, 56, and he's second in the league in batting average. Um, I'm calling him in Fuego Tuve right now because he is on fire. And then Jeremy Pena, dude, we can't forget about him. He has 18 multi-hit games in his last 40 contest, hitting 333 and all base percentage of 402. And he's raised his average from 235 to 263. You've got these guys out here. Jose Abreu, six straight games with an RBI. I mean, there's a lot going on. Kyle Tucker, 100 RBIs, like you mentioned. He's nearing 30-30. And Alex Bregman's hitting the cover off the ball. I'm telling you, this club is getting hot at the right time. This club is healthy. And that's what Chaz McCormick talked about after the game. I don't know if you caught his interview with uh, with um, Julia. And he said, we're healthy. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Everybody's executing. And we're having fun. And yeah. that is that is something you can't take away from this team. And I told y'all we're going to struggle. But do not fret because I promise you this team will be full steam when they hit the playoffs. Well, I think uh, what a lot of teams are going to do is they're going to sleep on the Astros and uh, you don't want to sleep on anything. So why don't you try right. the sleeper app? And this episode is brought to you by sleeper. That's right. The MLB playoffs around the corner, which means the clock is ticking on your chance to basically 100 times your, your cash on daily fantasy baseball. Baseball has never been more exciting than it is right now with studs like Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, and Chaz McCormick, heck, Yiner Diaz, future all-star catcher. You can pick more or less on stats of the stars, like I mentioned, with home runs, hits, strikeouts, heck, triples, um, extra bases, up for up to 100 times your payout on sleeper. Get your picks right, and you could win big. What do you do with your friends? You hang out with them. You know what? Get the app. You can get in a group together. You can chat. You can talk smack. And you can enter these contests in minutes. Use a promo code locked on, and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply. Sleepers terms of use for details um, are there, and you need to check those out. The $100 match is there for you today. Also, make sure that if you're going to watch oh, – Make sure that if you're going to go watch the Astros somewhere that you check out your local area Hooters. We were at the Baytown Hooters this last week, and Shay has a phenomenal restaurant. The girls there were phenomenal. They have great grub, great brew, and they have weekend. They have weekly specials. They have weekend specials. They have desserts. You name it, they have it. I would highly suggest the smoked wings. They are phenomenal. Go grab you some smoked wings. They have buy one, get one wings on Mondays and Wednesdays. They every night, Monday through Friday from two to seven, they have happy hour at the NASA Hooters. They are having every Thursday night karaoke after Thursday night football and happy hour till close. So Joe, go check out your local Hooters, whether you're in Baytown, Pasadena, Humble, Sugarland, Pearland, Galveston, or even up in Katy or Humble. Hooters is there. Why? Because Hooters makes you happy. And the Astros play the A's on Monday, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. All right. Um, I do want to say something about the Yankees real quick before we continue. Jason D Dominguez, the guy that came up and crushed the Astros, he's yes. actually got a torn UCL. And I so saw that. Uh, he's probably – they don't know if he's going to have surgery or not, but he's most likely going to miss – a good portion of the 2024 season. And that's a shame because this is a young kid that has a lot of talent and was on my fantasy team and was helping me uh, in the playoff roster, but uh, whatever. So, uh, but well, I, I, you know, you know, look, look, here's the thing. Um, I told a friend tonight at, at the event, um, someone, someone close to Yiner is originally from New York and him and I were talking and he said, 
he said, did you hear about Dominguez? And I said, I hadn't heard. And he told me, he goes, he goes, he's done. He's going to have Tommy John. It's, he said, he goes, it's such a disaster. Yankees fans are down bad. I mean, they have their season and their hopes for a future have gone from bad to worse. And then you had David Wells come out at the legends weekend, like the old timers game come out in support of Cashman and Boone. And so you've got this faction in Yankees Twitter. So look, I hate to see other teams with right. with 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 injuries. You you want to see guys like that competitive at least. But that's why, you know, we criticize this manager for resting players. We we criticize him for days off. But one thing other teams can't say is they can't say that our team is hurt because they're not. Um, they always do that. That's something that they Oh yeah. That's like well, a routine. It's just like Well, uh, I'll tell you. Yeah, about the FL2 Bay chant. Yeah. Yeah, that's look True Yankee fans, and I'll say this, true Yankee fans don't do that. Go find a Yankee fan, someone who's been there, someone who grew up in the Bronx. Those guys don't do that. That's probably like younger guys, no offense, millennials, if you're listening, but it's it's probably people that aren't as long on a tooth baseball-wise. So a lot of Yankees fans that I'm friends with do not embrace that, and they don't chant that at all. So Yeah. So the Astros have won 10 of their last 14 games, and those 10 wins – they're averaging about 11 runs per game. Just think about that, 11 runs per game. So if this if this offense continues to turn, and it all kind of hinged on the fact that Michael Brantley returned back to the lineup, and you, you started seeing Altuve return uh, kind of healthy and then Alvarez uh, kind of play more. But I think what you're seeing is this lineup turn into what we thought they would be and it just took a longer time to get it and even when um like you said when the big boys the other big boys or the semi big boys or the baby big boys aren't in the lineup approaching big boy yeah the approaching that's what we were saying the other day uh and uh chas mccormick and diaz uh, they're not in the lineup Uh, Uh, somebody picks them up and dubon to his credit he's starting to heat up a little bit with the bat and playing some great defense so i think that the Astros have a goal and they want to get out there. And like, that's why when everybody was freaking out when they were, they weren't scoring and doing all this, I was like, I'm okay. I know once it hits September and once it hits October, these guys know what to do. And so it's just, I'm not worried about it. Now, does that mean they're not going to hit another rough patch? I figured if they're going to lose any game versus the Padres, it was going to be Friday's game. Because Blake Snell is pretty good right. pitcher, but uh, they took care of business the rest of the series, and now the A series, the A series is the one that uh, we need to talk about. You can go and mention the medium big boys here, if you want to. No, I just, I just, I just think it's funny. Someone put medium big boys. It just reminded me. <laughs> it reminded me of when your kids are growing up. If y'all have children, you can relate to this. If you don't, um, you may remember it as a kid when you're going through that phase where like you, you, you aren't really gaining any muscle, but you still kind of got the baby fat, you know, you have like the Husky clothes. The first time a kid realizes you're putting them in Husky pants, they get really offended when they realize what the word Husky means. And so when someone said medium big boys, I'm like, can we just call Chaz Husky? (laughs) He's not a big boy. He's Uh, you can do that. I'm not going to call him Husky. (laughs) Hey, he's out there. He's my center. Husky can run. Hey, that Husky can run, man. He'll be, <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I just love it. Look, uh, someone said Chaz Harden. Oh my gosh. So, um, I love, it, I love wait, our fans. Did the Astros outscore the Texans today? Yes. The Astros, oh my gosh. Yes, dude. Yes. All is right in the world. Um, you know, you know, the, you know, the turntables have happened whenever, the Texans are scoring, you know, when, when the Texans start scoring more than the Astros, then, you know, like the Astros dynasty is over, right? Yeah. yeah look, um, well, I, yeah, I think it's just going to keep happening, good, but not, not, mm, um, I wouldn't the say Astros good. <laughs> the Texans are better than they were last yeah. year. They did lose um, Petrie today. Um, he, he, he went out with like a chest injury. Um, Look, CJ, CJ Stroud for a rookie, he's just he doesn't have a lot of protection right now. He was running for his life. Um, he had some he had some guys, he hit he missed guys wide open. He had some guys drop some stuff. 
the Texans are a work in progress. Their defense, for the most part, looked really good against that stellar offense that that the Ravens ran. So I know this isn't locked on Texans, but the Texans are definitely a lot more fun to watch this year, and they'll be a lot more enjoyable with D'Amico Ryan's. They've they've got the right leadership. They're they're heading in the right direction. Right. So go Texans. We'll always cheer for them because they're a Houston team. All right, so uh, let's go and switch gears towards the yeah. uh, the A series. I know we're running out of time, but we got Frommer Valdez on the mound versus uh, I think it's Mike Miller, Mason Miller, Mason Miller. Mason Miller is like one of their top prospects. Uh, he came up and pitched a few good games, and then I believe he got hurt. But he's zero and two with three point zero nine ERA. He has twenty five strikeouts and twenty three and one thirds innings pitch. If the A's are ever going to get good again, this guy will be probably be their ace, but it's going to take a couple of years for him to uh, develop. And so I know the A's have been uh, playing some a little bit better baseball, especially against the Rangers recently. I think that they, yeah. they did lose today, but um, this is the team that the Astros need to play their best baseball against because it's uh, the A's have typically played good baseball against them. And also they've, tend to play down to the competition like they play mm -hmm. down to the yankees they play down to other teams but uh they did uh play up to the competition so to speak with padres even though because yeah, they have i mean record. yeah you know the padres have very good players they have good role players they're just not their pitching has has not outside of snell it's really been a lot less than they anticipated like going into the year i i really expected the Padres to compete for a playoff spot and all that stuff. But um, you have Sears and Verlander on Tuesday. I don't know if you mentioned that. And then Blackburn and Brown going on Wednesday. And so there's there's some good pitching matchups from our end. And if if Valdez can just limit the runs, um, if, you know, Verlander can go out there, Sears is 4-11. I, I think he's very hittable. Verlander goes goes out there and does his thing. And then Hunter Brown, I think this is these games – is when Hunter Brown really needs to get back to his old self. And if he doesn't, lady, he's going to the bullpen, be, and they'll bring up Spencer Arrietty. Right. They've got to find something that works because it ain't well, or Kitty, and it ain't Brown right now. Yeah, well, but do they – Do they? can they expand? Can they expand one more time for the playoffs, or have yeah, they already he, expanded? No, they can't. Like, he's in the Astros organization – on September 1st. So they can call oh, up. Okay. Remember okay. Randy Rosarina was, uh, he didn't play that's in the true. major league season and got called up to uh, the playoffs. So yeah, that's true. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. And I'll be curious and I'll, I'll have to poke around if they feel like Eric Getty will be there. But remember my take on that is I don't know that he's long in the tooth enough in AAA to constitute and justify yeah. him coming up. So but if um, Hunter I Brown think, is not getting done, Jose Arquiti is not getting done, you've got to find somebody to get it done. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, I think Brandon Belak would be that guy before the, before Eric Getty. But, hey, guys, this has been a great Locked on Astros edition. Thank you all for showing up. 300 of you all showed up on a Sunday night, even beyond the night, beyond the time we're supposed to go on regularly. So I was hanging out with Yanner Diaz at Uberito. That's okay. Thank you all for making us your team every single day and subscribe to us. Be coming every day or help us get to 9,000, then to 10,000. And We're almost Eric, there, guys. Tell, Keep on subscribing. That's right, man. That's right. And go ahead and uh, uh, check out the A's playing the Astros Monday Sorry. night on Series XM. Just download the SXM app, and uh, Brent and I are messing each other up here, but that's what we do. I uh, thought you had it. I thought you had it. The Astros play the A's, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros. All right. It's late, guys. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow <laughs> after the game. Hey, Austin. Go Strohs. Yeehaw. That's right. Strohs before. Oh, I can't say that on there. <laughs>